In this video is going to be an introduction to teach you how to go ahead and set up your own website design. I'm going to go walk you through the hosting service and kind of go through the steps you'll need to kind of get started. Now at my website www.programmermind.com you'll find more information about this. Just click on website hosting and it'll take you right to that information which I'll show you here later. Okay, so first of all, you want to get a hosting provider. I use Bluehost as a choice. They're basically relatively cheap and everything. I'm only paying probably about $10 or so a year here, maybe less. There's many ones you can choose from. There's obviously GoDaddy and what, whatever your selection may be, but I've always stuck with Bluehost. So I'm, we're gonna, I'm, as an example, I'm going to use them. So. With Bluehost, they already have a simple setup. Once you sign up with the service, you basically just click on, you know, sign up now. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to do it here, but you select a domain name. That would be like the name of your website, like for example, and then they'll tell you if one's if it's available or not. Like mine's programmermind.com. I think it might say it's it's already taken. Right there, Programmer Mind is the primary domain of another account and cannot be re-signed up while when that account is active. So you'll basically set up the name of your program, your program, the name of your website there, and they'll they'll figure it out. And then this would be the um, another selection here. So once you do that, you basically click next. I am not going to be able to do it here unless I set up a new website, which I'm not going to be able to do. And they'll kind of walk you through the steps to get your site going and everything. And eventually they'll contact you and let you know that your site was um, approved or whatever and then you can start building content from that. Now basically you'll be working from a shell at that point because you're not going to have anything but an empty page and the empty page is actually known as the index so I'm going to kind of show you from my perspective how I went about doing it. So there's so many website tools you can use out there to build website content. You can even, believe it or not, you can use a notepad to actually build website content because everything is just HTML text and it can convert easily over to the web server. So, As an example, what I do though is I use this old software program. I know it's kind of dated, but it's called Herbsoft First Page. It's free. I found it online. I've been using it. It kind of gets the job done unless you have the money to go out and do some more professional web design like with uh, Dreamweaver or something like that. But it gets things done. So basically I, what you're looking right here is this would be my home page, which is the index.html. And let me go to the site to show you here. Actually, um, I want to do something here first. I want to update this because I just saved some new stuff in here. I'm transfer this over. It might not work because I just already recently overrided something, so there now it should be updated. I'll explain what's going on there a little bit later. So now let's go to the website. <clears throat> well, this is uh, basically my website, uh, programmermind.com. And on this website, what you'll do is you'll click on website hosting if you're interested in setting up your first hosting provider. You'll get some information there, some pop-up ads. And it'll walk you through the process here and it'll kind of explain what I was going over with Bluehost and everything. Or you could choose your own provider. So Next thing you want to do is if your website pro hosting provider doesn't have it, or doesn't have a good one, you'll want an FTP client. Basically an FTP client stands for Fire File Transfer Protocol and allow you to transfer your files from your hard drive to the server. And that's what I had open here earlier. But I just wanted to go through the pages here for you first. You'll see here this is the file Zilla that you just saw me had earlier. That's an example. And here I'll shows you the uploading. You just saw me do that earlier but I'll demonstrate that a little bit again here. And then when you've got file content on here and you want to update it from the server and you want to be able to see it, you basically download it back to your computer so that you can write it again. And then you would basically upload it to the server when you're done again. That's how I do everything. This is just telling you how to create images 
on your computer and you can copy and I'll, maybe I'll show you that later but let's go on to the FileZilla since I just spoke about it so right here is the one I'm using it's a free service I was actually it was recommended through Bluehost because I was having trouble using their file transfer protocol which uses JavaScript and for some reason wasn't compatible with my system or something but FileZilla free and it works really well basically what you want to do is you want to set up your hosting name here I showed you earlier that was your domain name mine's programmermind.com okay once you have that in you're gonna get your username which this will be provided by Bluehost so you want to ask them what your username is and then you put in your password and you click on quick connect obviously mine's already connected but it would basically I'll show you to reopen this window there and it'll look just like that so this right here is everything you're gonna see on your server this is your hard drive you're looking directly at your computer here so these are my files on my computer so you click on this little arrow here and what you want to do is you want to go to public HTML that's where everything resides directly on kinda of like the root of the server basically and for your startup page you want to go to index now when you open yours the first time it's going to be blank like a blank document but of course when I open mine it's going to exist already because I already have created one so you won't be able to open it from here I don't this is just basically for downloading but I was just saying when you open it like in your web tool you, you're just going to just be a blank page kind of like kind of like if you go here and you set new it'll look like this it's just a body text and everything but there's nothing in there so you need to basically start writing your stuff and everything maybe I'll do some videos later to show you how to set up simple pages and stuff but I wanted to kind of show you it's probably a lot easier than you imagine to get your own website going a lot of people think it's difficult but I found it it's actually easy the hard part is designing you know building all the content that goes into your site and really you want to build a, what's basically credible content if you don't have credible content and you try to you know put something up there and you're talking about things that you don't know about you're not gonna build good credibility for yourself so that's kind of what I do with my site now I'm trying to take a, a different approach to it lately I'm trying to go more of a professional image where before it was kind of like it was kind of a hobby thing for me but now I'm beginning to I want to put on a serious image for my recruiters and everybody and let them know I'm really serious about pursuing software which is um, kind of what I did last year but I'm still trying to get back into it. I did some contracting but basically that's what's going on here this is you can click on this little link if you're interested and this will tell you about my path into software and stuff like that getting a job as a software developer and that's a challenge if you don't have a lot of skill set even if you come out of college you'll be tasked with something so I don't want to go into too much on that but you can check it out like I said this is this video is devoted to teach you how to just set up um, a simple web page here and then when you have a web page on here as an example let me go back to one of my web pages here I'm just going to use like this ASP one as an example. I'll show you where it is over here. I think it's right here. Or we'll just do ASP lesson since this one popped up first. Let me just look for that. It's right here. So ASP lesson right here. So remember, this is everything on the server. So once you've written your content directly in here, what I do is I basically open it up here because these files will be stored on your computer first. They're not going to be on the server, obviously. So I just go here and I open it and I search for it wherever I put the folder and it's right here and you just double click on it and open it and from there now it's on your computer and you can just write the content and everything and when you're done and you're ready to upload it I won't do it here because I don't want to overwrite my previous pages but you look for it right here you can just hit the A key and it'll take you to it too and you right click you hit upload it'll give you a prompt saying target file already exists that's because mine exists on the server and you would click OK and it overwrite it but like I said unless I've already downloaded it I don't want to do it so basically I would just kind of do the reverse in this case I would you know download it here so I know it's safely on the server and let's just pretend I did this for the first time and I just created content I would hit upload like that and hit OK 
and basically it just transfers it over here. And if you go here and you look at the date, you'll see it that it's um right here, April 14th, and you'll see the time that you can tell it just now uploaded there. I'll move it over a little, little bit there. You see 11:30, so it's basically 11:30 here. So I just uploaded it. So I just basically whatever I stuck into that page will now be on the server. This is just telling me that I had other pages that were being updated. I just usually just click yes on that. So I keep all my pages current. And if I had put something new in here, it would immediately bring it over to this page. So that's basically all it is. This the point of this video. So. I was trying to see if there was anything else I could really show you, but it's just kind of a beginner section for me at this point. I'm going to start trying to put up more videos teaching you about how to start designing stuff on the internet and try to help find useful stuff that you would find beneficial, hopefully, on this channel. So I do appreciate your feedback or anything. If you're interested in subscribing, you can definitely go ahead and subscribe. And I know it's only my first video, but I'll be looking forward to hearing from you and working together with you on whatever. So thank you for watching. You guys have a good one.